before we introduce the panelists, which I will do after our presentation, I want to introduce our guest speaker, which that's what we'll start off with first. And that is Dr. Angela Hansen, who will be talking about hallucinations and delusions in older adults. And so it's a great time to do that just because we're heading into Halloween. And so she specifically <laughs> asked for this. And, and so it's going to be great. All right. Well, uh, I would like to thank the Project Echo Group for inviting me to give this talk. Let's see. Great. So um, I thought I would start with just a, a smattering of real true um, cases that I've seen in the dementia clinic over the last couple of years. So we have a checkbox that they can check on their form, whether their loved one is hallucinating, or they may, might just report that. Um, and so when I ask the tell me more question, these are stories that I might hear. They may say, well, um, my loved one talked about going to work this morning, but they retired five years ago. Um, so they identify that as a hallucination. They keep asking about whether we're going to take care of the baby in the house, which isn't there. Um, one, uh, one of my patients was seeing deer in the grass, um, sitting on the patio, and wanted to know if they were real or not. Um, they might appear to be talking to someone that's not there. Um, and then one hallucination was, well, they keep accusing me of stealing their reading glasses. So we're going to talk about um, hallucinations, delusions, things in between, and what we can do about them. So what is a delusion? So a delusion is defined as a false belief that is firmly held despite evidence to the contrary. So thinking you're Teddy Roosevelt when you're not. Um, and there are subtypes. Um, I've seen some people describe there's two subtypes of delusions. There's probably more than two, really, but two kind of ways to think about it. One would be a bizarre subtype. Um, and I tend to think of that, about this like an, uh, an X-Files episode. You know, they, someone, uh, the government implanted a chip in my brain. It's making me visit aliens. Um, Non-bizarre delusions are things that might seem like they could be true. I um, mean, it sometimes causes a lot of drama, like for example, in an assisted living facility. Um, the belief your partner is cheating on you or the belief that someone's stealing from your room, things like that. And I, I think that you can see either of these um, types of delusions in dementia, although the non-bizarre subtype seems more common. You know, just the, I went to work today. Well, you no, know, you haven't gone to work several years, but they did used to go to work um, in the past. <clears throat> so what causes delusions? It may very well depend on the type of dementia involved, but one theory is called a left frontal release, and that's where you have a breakdown of the frontal and temporal networks, especially on the right side. And so then you get the left brain that's relatively hyper-functioning, which may lead to impaired self-monitoring and excessive and false explanations for things. You may also have misidentification delusions if you have um, destruction of median temporal lobes. So what is a hallucination? So this is a perception of a various sensory quality without a corresponding stimulus. So the lay language is you see something that isn't there or you hear something that isn't there. And they can occur in any of the five senses. Oh, let me go back to that. See if I can go back. There we go. I just had to take off numb lock. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, any of the five senses this can occur in. Um, so you know, getting back to some of those examples that I described before, someone that thought they went to work early in the morning really wasn't a hallucination, but seeing their workplace couch in front of them when there's no couch there, that would be a hallucination. So, and then there's this sort of intermediate what I would think of as kind of an intermediate phenomenon, which is an illusion, which is a false interpretation of an existing stimuli. So it's not quite completely a hallucination, but it's not quite real. Um, and these may be more common in Lewy body dementia or people that have visual hallucinations. So um, seeing faces in patterns more than you should. So we all see faces in things and we see patterns, you know, you see the animals in the clouds and things like that. Of course we have hopefully have insight that we're doing that. Um, and also it's tempered to some extent. 
Um, but people who actually see like images in things like here Alice is seeing a, a face in the doorknob, um, that is considered an illusion versus a visual hallucination versus maybe both. All right, so how common are these? So in Alzheimer's disease, um, I reviewed several studies and it does vary widely depending on how you identify them, but um, I think the study's less prone to selection bias, about 13 to 20 percent of patients have, uh, of Alzheimer's patients have visual hallucinations, or have some types of hallucinations. So it's actually more common that they don't, right? Um, and they, but those that have hallucinations, um, they tend to persist and they tend to portend a worse outcome for those patients. And the most common is visual, but you can also see auditory hallucinations. And then the other hallucinations, so tactile, olfactory, much more rare. Of course, Lewy body dementia, um, visual hallucinations are common. In fact, it's one of the diagnostic core criteria. The visual hallucinations are often described as people or animals, sometimes short duration, um, may perceive human or animal figures in inanimate objects, like our Alice earlier. Um, they also describe what I think sound kind of terrifying are presence hallucinations. Like so they feel like someone is in the room. Um, although they often are not that bothered by it. So that's reassuring. Um, and then sometimes they can occur in evenings or dim light. So, you know, they're seeing what, what they might interpret as a, what we might interpret as a shadow. There might, they might interpret as a, a person. So what causes these? So, you know, what causes anything in the brain? What you have to do is take a step back and say, well, what causes kind of normal cognition? So what causes per, uh, our perception of the world? So everyday perception is a combination of external sensory input, internal object and scene representation, and then goal-directed attention. So you need this coordination of this really intense system. So bottom-up info from the sensory, from what our eyes are putting in, all the way to you know the back of our brain interpreting what we're seeing and then all of the systems in between so there's a lot of places for it to go awry so what i would say is just reviewing the literature there are probably several causes of hallucinations depending on the disease um, and that of course affects maybe prognosis and treatment um, so this is just a very brief little kind of snippet of what was in the literature but um, people suspect that hallucinations in Alzheimer's disease may be driven by an um, imbalance of neurotransmitters. So you have uh, cholinergic uh, neuron or neuronal signaling um, turned down and norepinephrine and dopamine are ramped up. Or you might it might be due to specific neurodegeneration in certain parts of the brain. Um, one paper described that in Lewy body dementia, you really have a decrease in the cholinergic activity in the thalamic reticular nucleus, which inhibits certain parts of the other thalamus, and then you get these visual hallucinations. Um, this is a pattern that I saw over and over in the literature, this disinhibition of a network. Um, and then schizophrenia, one paper uh, discussed that it might be increased cerebral blood flow to the thalamus. So that's of course quite different than a neurodegenerative disease that is mostly you have decreases in everything. Um, and then of course, specific lesions in the brain from stroke can cause you know, hallucination or delusion-like syndromes, like phantom limb syndrome, for example. So they're all kind of all over the map in terms of causes. Um, uh, and then just to take a step back, you know, when we're talking about hallucinations in older adults, you know, neurodegenerative disease is one possibility, but there are others. So these are other causes of hallucinations that I'm going to go over. So um, has anyone heard of Charles Bonnet syndrome? I guess you don't necessarily have to raise your hand if you have, but um, I had not heard of this until fellowship. Um, so this is an acquired visual problem. Or, sorry, this is if you have an acquired visual problem, so partial or total blindness, and then you're seeing things that you really can't see. Um, so um, often these are simple or non-formed images, but it has been reported that people can see um, people or animals. Um, and the cause is, a dis what, what happens is you get a destruction of visual sensory afferent neurons because they're not being signaled anymore. And then you disinhibit the visual cortex and the brain fills in the missing information. Uh, so similar to phantom limb syndrome. 
Um, insight is usually intact, but I suppose if you have visual impairment and then you start having dementia, maybe you have these hallucinations and before you could just ignore them, but now you don't have the insight. Um, and, um, but you shouldn't really have other types of hallucinations if it's just this. Uh, all right, so hallucinations and sleep. So um, there's a lot of literature about just sleep in general and hallucinations. So when we first fall asleep or when we're first waking up, and these are normal, we can have normal hallucinations. Um, they're usually very brief and you know, you hear a doorbell ring, it didn't really ring. Um, or you hear a voice. They're not usually scary or they don't last very long. Um, and then of course, if you are sleep deprived, you're more prone to hallucinations. So what I tried to find, I really couldn't find much in the literature, but trying to put this all together. So we know that sleep deprivation and falling asleep and waking up from sleep, you know, puts us in this kind of pro-hallucinatory state. And then patients with Alzheimer's have altered sleep-wake cycle and might fall asleep several times during the day. So could they be having these types of hallucinations? And then, you know, then the treatment for those folks would just be sleep hygiene. So, but just something to think about. Um, when you're taking that history. All right, so if anyone's seen Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, um, Johnny Depp's portrayal of Hunter S. Thompson, of course, they saw a lot of bats. Um, it may have been preceded by the ether that they ingested right before, or inhaled, I guess. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> anyway, this is my delirium slide. So delirium is very common in older adults and in our younger adults that um, partake in ether. Um, this is a disturbance of consciousness with reduced ability to focus, sustain, or shift attention. Um, it's usually rapid, it develops over a short time, tends to fluctuate. Um, and in our older adults, of course, it can be caused by a medical condition. So a UTI, uh, first sign of an infection in older adults can often be delirium, or a side effect of a new medication, either that they got prescribed or that they're taking. So um, surreptitious um, alcohol or illicit drug use. And these can be quite frightening. So they did not want to stop for the bats. These were very frightening um, uh, to, to the people. Um, so um, be very aware of delirium. So if, you, if you're treating a patient with dementia and then all of a sudden they're hallucinating, you know, kind of my first thing to do is do kind of a screen. If, if I'm on the telephone, it's harder, but, you know, take a set of vitals and make sure you're not missing an infection or a um, medical illness. Um, so here's the CAM, the confusion assessment method um, for that. And I'll, I, I'm assuming a lot of you have seen this. In the interest of time, I'm just going to move on. So um, seizures and hallucinations. Um, patients who have um, dementia um, are more prone to seizures, particularly early onset Alzheimer's um, or stroke patients. Usually it's not subtle. I mean, usually you know your patients are seizing, but you may get a history that they're having spells or they're just seeming to kind of be like in a post ictal kind of state and they may hallucinate kind of before or after that. Um, and so if you're worried about seizures, certainly send them for an EEG because that would be treated, of course, with seizure medication. Um, auditory hallucinations, best studied in Parkinson's. Um, unlike some of the auditory hallucinations of schizophrenia these voices tend to be kind of non-imperative and non-paranoid so they're not as scary in theory they're just kind of like i hear voices in the hallway someone's outside my door um, and similar to the charles bonnet syndrome if you have hearing impairment you could have auditory hallucinations so you're hearing something that's not actually stimulating your uh, inner ear bones it's coming from within um, so buzzing or humming, or it could be voices, or even I have a couple of patients that hallucinate songs. Um, so sort of, I don't know how to differentiate that from just getting a song stuck in your head, to be honest. <laughs> but um, I guess if you get a song stuck in your head, you can kind of get it out of it by reading a book or something. But they're always hearing a song. Um, again, it's a disinhibition of the auditory circuit and then treatment, as you see there. Um, so what do we do for treatment? So I'll, um, I know I'm, it looks like I'm running low on time, so I'm just going to try to do it okay. All right. Um, so yeah, this is important, of course. What do we do to treat these things? So um, Dumbo apparently saw pink elephants on parade. He was fine with them. He kind of enjoyed the pink elephants that he saw. Um, so do they need treatment? Um, 
you know, of course, if they're not true hallucinations and they're just thinking they went to work that day when they didn't, you know, first you want to make sure, are they true hallucinations? And if, even if they are true hallucinations, are they bothering anybody? You may just need to do some education with the family and patient, but this can sometimes happen and, you know, let's just keep our eye on it. Um, so the non-pharmacologic treatments of anything in dementia is, is the first line. So you want to optimize visual and hearing impairment. For visual techniques, I've heard sort of uh, two different things. One is to confront it directly. If you think you see a six and a half foot tall rabbit, just touch it and see if it's really there. Um, if, or just to try to look away. Um, we had a patient this just earlier today, actually we were talking about that um, sees two women on the couch, one nice, one not nice. They covered the couch with a blanket and she can't see them anymore, but she knows they're under there still. But, you know, she's kind of less bothered by it now that there's a blanket on the couch. Um, so, um, in, in the interactive technique. So, um, this is a slide that I took from the Alzheimer's Association for caregivers. So, reassuring the person that it's okay. You don't want to argue with them about the hallucination or delusion, but you can try to gently redirect look for unmet needs, make sure vision, hearing impaired, and I'd also add to this um, sleep, making sure they're sleeping okay, um, and then making sure there's no weapons around. So if you think there's an intruder in your house and you have a gun or a knife or something, you could definitely hurt somebody, um, and so making sure that's not happening. If you do need to reach for medication, so a little bit it kind of depends on what's causing them and that kind of thing, but it's, that kind of stuff. But if it's your typical Alzheimer's or Lewy body hallucination, probably due to anti or to uh, decreased cholinergic input, we do try donepezil or any of its cousins. Um, so acetylcholinesterase inhibitors can work very well for some hallucinations. So that's our first line. There's some data for SSRIs. And then of course, if someone's having very scary hallucinations and they're psychotic, from that, um, we will certainly reach for antipsychotics. Risperidone and olanzapine are the best studied in Alzheimer's. If someone has Lewy body, of course, you have to worry about um, being extra sensitive to neuroleptics, so you might try quetiapine. And then don't forget to stop offending medications. So, you know, take that drug, you know, maybe their doctor just started them on a bladder medicine that is making them hallucinate. Well, you can just stop the medicine. So the summary is that hallucinations are common. You might need to ask about them specifically, and I try to take a little bit more history to make sure they're not just delusions. Um, they may have multiple etiologies, and I would look for delirium, I would look for hearing and vision impairment. Non-pharmacologic treatments are really the mainstay. And then first line tends to be acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, so denepazil and friends. Uh, antipsychotics, if really needed, but caution for Lewy body. So, questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Hansen, for your presentation.